Charles Edgar Hampton here today on behalf of the Variety Tube channel and what I want to walk you through today is how to make my sassy summer sangria. I'm going to make one that's red, I'm going to make one that's white and so uh, just to let you know and get your ingredients together little cutting board, kiwis, oranges, peaches, plums, got a cab salve, have a qualifying wine, alright it's German, alright Mighty mango, naked juice, strawberries, Fuji apples, watermelon, lime, lemon, and one moment. Also, of course, alcohol-wise, got to have a little bit of vodka, a little bit of apricot brandy, and ginger ale. Let's get started. Alright, first thing you want to do is go on and prepare your fruit. So, when I was picking fruit, considering that these are not going to be eaten, but they're going to be juiced, they're going to sit in... Alright, um, a liquid, uh, you want them to be softer and more ripe, more flavorful, and you can kind of get away with it being a little softer than what you would normally eat if you were going to say, you know, take this to work or eat this just straight up. So I wanted to make sure that my fruits were a little juicier, softer, riper, like I said, just because of the nature of what I'm getting them for. I'm getting them for their flavor, I'm getting them for juice. I'm not necessarily getting them for looks, uh, which is a completely different thing. So, um, what I'm going to do is I try to separate things into what I'm going to juice and then what I'm actually going to cut up and put in the sangria. So over here I'm going to be cutting up all right, these. Um, I may juice one lemon and then wedge the other, or I said lemon, orange or whatever. So anyway, I may juice one orange and then... Um, you know, slice up the other to put in, and I'll definitely um, be cutting up maybe, maybe half the peach maybe be cut, but it just depends on whatever you want to do. So, you know, some people like more of a, I guess a quote-unquote chunky, you know, sangria, just all according to whatever you want. So, starting to cut up some fruit. All right, next, let's talk about the hardware that we're going to need. Um, got a chop wizard here, wonderful little tool. Anyway, of course, you have your larger size, and then you have your smaller size holes. All right. Simple juicer. And the coup de grace of juicers, the Jack LaLanne. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go on and peel the kiwis, peel the peaches, and uh, we'll start with that. I learned when watching the Food Network is a good way, easy way, simple way to peel all right, fruit like this. Cut your ends off. All right, gives you a nice flat surface. All right, and then go as such. Whatever you missed. Alright, just clean up your little edges, no problem. It won't take long at all. Thanks, dear. Once you get your kiwis peeled, you're going to want to probably get rid of that which is in the middle. So a simple way that you could do that, that I could do it, you cut down the center because as you can see that stem part can be a little tough. You're going to have it split open. Alright. So you can either make a cut like so, being very careful. Alright. So making basically a triangular wedge, cutting out, and then going and uh, lift it and peel it right out. And there's not that much left in there. And if you're one of those people that don't like the waste, go and take care of it just like that. 
And that way, you're not wasting food. Depending on how you want to do things, you may have the, let's say, conundrum of do I go smaller or do I go larger? And uh, what you want to consider is that you're going to have acid and things like that that are in this beverage and the alcohol. And in short, it's going to eventually kind of get mushy, start to break that fruit down. So if you go smaller, what you're going to end up probably is a mess, depending on if you're going to make it the day of, then it may be all right. But if you start waiting a couple of more, then you're going to want to go with the larger size. So if you're dicing it up, then you want to try to, I guess, stick to maybe um, half-inch cubes. Um, I don't think you want to go any smaller than that, so we'll put this aside. Let's get started on the kiwi. For me, since I'm doing the cheat way, all right, um, looking at this, all right, you can't tell, I guess, maybe necessarily, but this is about an inch thick, and uh, I don't really want them that much. I'm going to cut this in half before, all right, this way. I don't know if you can see, but, you know, how you're doing the best I can. All right, so I'm going to cut it in half this way, and just go on and put that down there. And with this chop wizard, that's all it is, and it's in there. Alright, and I'll just keep doing that for these pieces. And there's no need for me to waste camera time with you seeing that, but that's the beauty of how this thing works. You got your pieces down there, they sell a little thing that goes in there and cleans all that out, it comes with it. Beautiful time saving device. Now, what I'm going to do is I have these little bowls out. And uh, I'm going to take all of the fruit that I've cut up and divide it in two. Because like I said, I'm going to make a white one and I'm going to make a red one. And to make sure that everything is balanced and you don't know, you may want to put more of one fruit in another. Alright, um, considering the different tastes and textures and um, flavors in the wine. So, let's divide everything up. Intelligences, so I didn't feel like I needed to show you all dividing everything up. But anyway, once that's done... Just take it and put it in the freezer and um, just let it chill out once you know that fruit has been cut. I think it starts to lose its nutritional value if you're going to keep it out and in room temperature. So go on and put it somewhere nice and cool. Alright, doing the peaches, what I'm going to do is take my knife, cut through to the pit, roll it all the way around. Keep with that same groove going all the way through. Take it, twist it. All right. You can either take a nail if you got good enough nails. Go on and pull it out. And uh, now you can really use the same process for peeling if you like. Um, you can either do it that way, cut off little slivers, whatever. Alright, you want to try to keep as much fruit as possible, so if you're messing up like I did, then, you know, hey, nothing's going to be perfect. And I'm going to come back behind and, again, eat those skins just because it's not good to waste. Kiwi-wise, you have to waste. You don't eat the skin on the kiwi, but with these, um, it's still tasty. There you are. So of course, just repeat for the other half and um, get to it. No, I'm not. Alright, plunge. You use the same process with everything else. Going to slice it through to the pit. Rotate around. Once that's done, twist. Remove and keep it moving. Now with your plums, Alright, when you're going for 
for your orange, considering. I'm gonna go in and slice it. If you notice, all right, the two ends, all right, you wanna cut crossways with those. You don't wanna take the chance of possibly having just like a whole bunch of skin, so you wanna increase the surface area potential. So that you can get as much juice as you want. And you'll cut the ends off, you won't be needing any um, just excessive rind. That's what you want. All right, and I'm doing about um, what do I call those? Quarter inch. And of course, you will probably want to take the seeds out. It only really comes in the play for the ones that are in the middle. Notice I'm using a good knife. A lot of this fruit isn't producing a lot of juice, which is great. You want your juice to go into your sangria, not to your cutting board and every place else. So, sharp knives are good knives. All right, for your strawberries. No biggie. All right, already uh, rinsed them. Take them going in near the core, slice them. It's kind of big. Keep it moving. All right, now I'm going to prep the rest of your veggies to be juiced. All right, for your citrus, I'm going to use the uh, regular style juicer. All right, again. Notice the ends and cut this away perpendicular to that. All right, now it's time for the liquid portion. Uh, I'm gonna take our white, pour it in the darker one, so that way it'll show up a little bit easier. All right, remember the dominant ingredient in sangria is supposed to be wine, so definitely go and lay it all out there. I'm only going to do one at a time. All right, keep in mind that certain juices are going to affect the color of it. So if you want to keep more of a clear one, less than an opaque one, then uh, you're going to want to avoid certain all right, juices. I'm going to go on with my line next. Keeping in mind, lemon and lime, gonna make it a little bit tart. You're gonna need to balance it out with some sugar. Alright, use half of my mango. Again, it's made and not made at all. It's going to make it a little bit uh, opaque, but you'll be fine depending on what you like. Or, like I said, if you're a purist, maybe like, no, can't do it, but. 
It's whatever you want to make it. Apricot brandy. So for those that are wondering, I guess I need to measure just so you can know. I took a standard, it should be a 750 milliliter bottle. Yep, 750 milliliter bottle of white. So, one moment. 